thought I'd give a second demo of my OpenGL inspector now that it's come along a bit since my previous video. So I'll fire this up and you can see that I've added a hotkey to trigger sampling in just whatever the foreground process is. And I've added sample logging. So what I'll do is I'll just log this to the desktop so you can see it come up here. And you can set the interval. So instead of have instead of logging the data every single time a frame occurs in game, you can just set an interval so it'll only write every 0.1 seconds. Because if you were to update every single frame at high frame rates, you'd get a massive log file that'll be quite hard to manipulate. So what I'll do is I'll just fire up Minecraft and I'll let that come up. Right, so I'll log that in and while that's logging in I'll use the hotkey and it'll ask for my password. And that sound there, that submarine sound, that's just an indicator that it started to sample. And so I'll just open up a world. You can see the meters have started to run. And so of course, the fans will spin up and this will run quite slowly because I'm using the QuickTime player to record this. Now you can see that it's getting the frame rate and it's, when I stop this, I'll get a different sound and it will write it out to the desktop, as you can see there. I'll just do a second log and show that this works in full screen when it's is maximized. So back to game, take the sample. Now the fans will really start spinning up. So. Uh, walking up there. And so as you can see it game still works fine. There's and it's writing the sample, so I'll just stop sampling and I'll quit Minecraft. And you can see that second sample's been written to the desktop, so I'll just show the data that it writes. Basically it just writes Everything, everything that you can see in the inspector, so frames per second, average, max, and minimum. And it'll, as you can see, it's written it through those intervals, and as I said before, it's not aligned to it, it's just a wait, 0.1 seconds, then you can write the next frame. So in reality, it's actually a bigger gap. And so I'll just graph this, just to show what it does look like. X, Y, share that X axis, and it should come up now, yep. Just make this a bit more readable. And as you can see, it's given me a nice graph of my frames per second information. Now, there's a few things to just note about this graph, firstly, that hasn't got the, the axis labels done, but anyway. Uh, so the blues are frames per second, red's minimum, the yellow orange is maximum, obviously, and the green average there, that's not a moving average, that's the average of the entire sample. There's a bit of a difference there. And also, as you can see, the the frame rate isn't always aligned to the maximum and minimum. That's just because while it waits that 0.1 of a second interval before writing the next log line, the actual maximum or minimum may occur in between logs and it will notice that and write, and write that out. And that's the reason for the difference there. Now, there's actually one other thing that I've discovered with this inspector and that's that it works with WebGL, which is kind of cool. So what I'll do is I'll just open up Chrome It'll come up with this demo, and I'll inject my code. It'll, of course, ask for the password. That's the last thing I've got left to do, which is have it ask for a password but when the application starts up, and then don't ask for it later on. So what I'll do is I'll just click OK. You can see the frames per second meters all come up, and I can do this WebGL demo. And I'll just open up another demo and demos do a Doom 3 model and the meters will start updating and you can see it's reasonably aligned to the actual built-in meter and this works quite well. I can take this full screen and it'll keep logging while I'm doing that and I'll just stop the meters and you can hear it do that little beep to indicate that I've stopped them. And now, have a look at that sample. So I'll open it up in numbers. Put a graph. 
and as you can see it's worked very well and now you can see that there's a bit of a gap there and that's because I, le I left the sample running in between the demos and because it hasn't it didn't log a frame in between the demos there's a fairly big gap in time there and that's what explains that and so that's all I've got to show for this demo thanks for watching